All right, what's up, everybody? So, bringing you back to the channel again. It's been a while since I last posted a video, but today I'm gonna re I'm doing another tutorial on a, a rather big question on a rather big topic, and it basically is the foundation of your airline and what it will be capable of doing in the future. We're gonna be, we're gonna be starting a series on how to build a hub, and then this first part is gonna be about how to choose, design, and then uh, later operate the hub. The second part will cover setting up the waves and picking the um, planes and all that good stuff to start with. So it's probably going to overlap with one of my other videos. But um, so, but the first thing we're going to do is how to choose a country. Part of the main thing of, the, of designing a hub is choosing a country that's going to grant you the, the best chance of success. So as some of you know, I operate the airline in Indonesia over here and Indonesia is got a rather large domestic market has a lot of big um, markets there so it's got Singapore here Kuala Lumpur and then it's got a big domestic market um, to itself amongst that it's in a good location to service China and Australia which are two major things that you want which are two major um, major parts of my business model with my airline there um, as you'll be able to see when I pull up the planes so all, it, mainly it's about having traffic flow from Middle East, China, all the way to Australia. So the main hub that I use is the biggest city, which is Jakarta. But Jakarta, just because Jakarta is the biggest city, and we're going to cover that today, does not necessarily mean it's the best hub. So you, you know, I have four other hubs here. So I have one in, I have one in Medan, I have one in Jakarta, I have uh, Sub, Bali, and then I have Angjong and Makassar right here. So I have four, five total hubs here, and all of them do a different purpose, but some of them are better than others, and we're going to explain that today. As my airline, as my airplanes pop up, you can see the, the flow of traffic. Anyway, so today I'm going to kick it off on auto today. And we're, auto just reset, and now I figured this was a great time to do the video. Um, so basically, I'm going to show you how I choose the country I'm going to operate in. So there are a couple of tools that we can do use to do that. So as we just saw, there is the AS route map tool. Now I operate most of my stuff on Templehof, so I understand the Templehof game world, and I won't ever um, propose to understand the rest of them. But Auto <clears throat> is its own game world here. But I'm going to use the Templehof game. I'm just going to use this this setup right here to help me determine some useful information about choosing a country. Um, so you basically you, you get a nice big map like this and depending on what you want to do most of the time as players have sometimes you may not have a choice in airlines and where you end up so i did not i got an open spot in indonesia and look where i am so that's where sometimes it's just about where you get an open spot so the, the critical thing is if you do have an opportunity like a new long-term world or, or a temporary world resets just think about where what is either what's going to be fun or what's going to offer you the best chance of success. So choosing a country can come down to a few things. You might consider a country like Saudi Arabia, which has a really good domestic market, or like Indonesia, good domestic market, China. Mainly you want to you might want to consider a country that has a large domestic market that you can start off with. That's really important. In AS, because the only people that can directly compete with you are people that are in your own country. So, for example, we use the United States because it's probably the easiest thing for me to use. So, if I'm a, if I'm an airline and I'm based myself in New York, and I fly a flight from New York to Miami, the only person that can the only airline that is based in you that is based in the United States can fly another flight between New York and Miami carrying passengers. You can't have an airline in London. To try to operate a flight between New York and Miami, servicing pa servicing domestic passengers in the U.S. That won't work. He might be able to do that, stop in New York and carry his own passengers down to Miami, but he cannot carry your pa American passengers between New York and Miami. Um, that's airline sim works on the base five freedoms from uh, on from ICAO. You can look those up. Um, so it works off of those main five freedoms. It does not consider the others, and you're not able to obtain the others in the game. So choosing a country, like I said, comes down to one, 
what is the domestic market like? The United States has a huge one. I mean, you're talking multiple major cities. China, similar case, multiple major cities. You, operate, you might operate hundreds of flights between Beijing, Shanghai, and Beijing, Hong Kong. Um, you know, there's a, there's a rather large amount. So basically, the location of the country is also a critical thing. Um, with Indonesia being where it is, it's kind of hard. You don't have, one, people don't really want to fly to Europe. That's the demand. People don't really want to fly to Europe. I got a couple of destinations there, but that's mainly because Singapore is here. The the main the, the only demand that was or is available to Europe directly from my country is to Amsterdam. And it's really hard to fill those flights even then. Everything else I fly, you got some stuff to the Middle East and to Asia. So the location of the country also plays a role in what you're going to be doing, how you're going to be operating. So like like Australia is way down here, that your connections are going to be a lot different. And where you're going to fly are going to be a lot different. You're not going to be flying to the same destinations that somebody in the United States might fly to. Um, and it's going to be the aircraft you're going to have to use to be able to access certain um, markets are going to be very different. So your location of your country also determines your future operations model. It's very important that you make sure to choose a country that's going to, one, either if you're, if you're a new player, I would not recommend starting in some place like the United States. The United States gets extremely competitive. Your load factors are probably not going to be the same as an airline in the United, as an airline in Indonesia. I'm the only airline in Indonesia. I have a 95% load factor. So almost all of my flights are full. In the United States, with the competition, that may not be the case for you. So I would, I don't know. The United States is probably not the best place to kick it off for the first time in a long-term world, especially um, unless the unless a really large carrier goes away. New Mexico. I would recommend if you were going to start. I recommend probably Mexico. I recommend Brazil. I'd probably recommend you. United States and Europe are not good countries to start. Perhaps Canada. I mean. You want enough the big cities in the country to, to allow you to learn, but not so many that uh, it allows for a bunch of competition. So Saudi Arabia is another good one, um, as well as India and Indonesia is also a good one. Australia is a good one as well. So they're very these are those are the very good uh, some of the very good places. China is a great one because there's demand almost everywhere. You can start in almost any airport and succeed. Um, so. Mainly, those are those are the best airports. Um, I would say, um, in that case, if, especially if you're not an experienced player, that that was that those are the great places to go. We're gonna kick it off today. I'm going to the United States. So, the critical thing with the United States is moving on to our next section is how to choose an airport. All right. So we talked about what we're going to do, what we need to do in order to find a domestic market. I'm going to show you the tools that are available in game that you can use in order to determine a good city, a good a good country per se that has the the that touches all the boxes that we just discussed real quick. Um, so we talked about having enough cities to justify to to sustain your growth or just having enough big cities around you um, that you can move uh, demand from and around that you can manipulate your have your waves work and your connections and everything else. So Africa is, is a very difficult um, continent to master. It's not for the faint of heart. That's why I really didn't recommend anything in, in Africa. Because depending on your location, you have to... Um, I have discovered that in Africa, it's uh, airline sim really does a good job of modeling uh, the real-world demand here. And an example of this I had when I started in Tunisia one time, I didn't do enough research in the country. I did nothing. Um, I figured Tunisia was a pretty would be easy. Um, I started there and I was flying uh, certain flights between places that had demand, but I didn't quite get it. Um, and then another player started on top of me and started flying flights to France, and I was like, "Well, that's never going to work. That's the whole reason why I didn't do that." Um, turns out. Tunisia is a col was a colony of France, so almost every city in France has a demand to go to Tunisia. So that was something that you should do. If you're going to start in a country, especially in Africa, I would recommend doing some research. Um, that might help you find out where your demand is. 
Um, but like I said, we're we're going to start in the United States. Um, but I'm, I want to show you a couple other things. So the United States, you can see, has a lot, obviously, a lot of states. And within those states, there might be cities within them. Uh, amongst, like you have Alaska has a bunch of cities. Uh, but only one major really air, major, one major airport that you might want to fly into amongst maybe Juno. I don't think Juno has a transfer time. It does. Uh, anyway, so those are some of the things you want to consider. Now in the United States, like I was saying, there are a lot of things that you might want to look at. Like the state of Texas, pretty a lot of big cities, a lot of good places to start an airline. But the United States is just that big. Europe is a similar thing. But if we go to somewhere like China, you see that you have a lot of provinces. A lot of the bigger countries have provinces that you have to then navigate into and look at what's available. Wuhan, China. Um, I got lucky and picked that. So, for example, like Indonesia has, has the same kind of thing. So we have Jawa and then Jakarta, and then you have multiple other airports in the area. So Sub is the other one with the transfer time. Jakarta, Yogyakarta has transfer time. Uh, what did they have? They changed this. Interesting. Um, so, so basically, you, you can just look at that. This is a good tool. Just hit through database and countries, and you can get a good look at a country before you start there um, in terms of what it can offer you. Um, countries like Qatar and Dubai. So countries like Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. Those are very popular startup points for a lot of people, so I want to discuss them right quick. You have to understand that Airline Sim works on the so there is demand to all of these places. But the major point of Dubai and, and Qatar is connecting the world. So their location grants them a huge advantage. And this whole area right here generally has that same advantage. So anywhere from Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iran, this whole area has a similar advantage, the Middle East. They can connect a lot of the world to, you know, itself um, based on their location because they're kind of smack dab in the middle of it to a degree. So it's under, it's quite, it's important to understand that about when you, also when you're choosing a country. So we were moving on to airports. So like I said, we're starting in the United States. So I'm expecting there to be a lot of different startups here because everybody wants to start in the United States. The United States is relatively easy. Everybody wants to start there. But what the main thing is what in learning is, as I was saying earlier, how Jakarta isn't the best hub. It's the biggest city, but not the best hub. So what did I mean by that? When it comes to airline sim, airline sim is all about connection time. You will gain a better rating in the online reservation system by, by having a shorter connection time. So let me pull up an example of this. Here's my example. So we're doing a Hong Kong to Sydney King Richard, Sydney King Richard Smith. Airline team is going to grant a better rating to the, the, the direct flight, of course. So uh, of course the direct flight will have the highest rating between the two cities. But after that, what comes first? The shortest flight time. So usually it's the best connection time or the shortest flight time. It's usually a combination of both. So you got Hong Kong and Port Moresby is the next highest rated flight. And it has a lot to do with the aircraft too, but the connection time plays into that as well. So as you can see, you got Hong Kong to Darwin and then Darwin to Sydney. I want to point out that Port Moresby has a turnaround time of 45 minutes. 45. So it is very quick from his plane to land, and then for him to be able to then have the next flight depart, which reduces the amount of time that the plane is on the ground and the time that it takes it to then reach the destination. This one's faster because you're flying 277s versus a CS3 in there, and probably connection times as well. But you'll see that my flight, my, my airline, I route Hong Kong to Sydney Kingsford Smith through Jakarta. And you can see that my flight isn't that high on this list. And my reasoning for saying this is to emphasize the importance of using a hub has a shorter connection time versus the biggest airport. 
because airline sim cares more about that than it cares about your ability to fly to the biggest city. There are a couple things, there are a couple other things you want to talk about from big cities. Big cities oftentimes have, granted, they do oftentimes have more slots. So if we take a look at, since Florida's right here, we can take a look at Miami International. Nine bar city, 22 slots. Now, I don't remember if auto has double slots or not. I think it does. But you can see that it has 22 slots and an hour and 30 minute turnaround time, transfer time. Now, that's a big deal. You have a lot more slots, so you can fly more flights, but it's going to take you a long time to transfer those passengers. The passenger, the flight, the overall flight time is going to be a lot higher. And if you look at Jacksonville, this is a six bar, 12 slots in one, one hour, which is not bad. And then you have, then you have something like, you want to go over to Tampa, similar thing. You can have a nice hour and 15 minutes, 18 slots. I think slots in auto are doubled, to be correct. If you want to go to somewhere like this area, you don't have a transfer at all, but you have slots there. So it's really not a point in flying out of there. But if you look at Pi, you have a 45-minute turnaround time and eight slots. So you're going to get that. So if we take a quick look at where that's located, Granted, Pi doesn't have the same uh, demand that Tampa has because the airline sim's demand is not based on the city, but rather the airport. It doesn't have the same demand that Tampa has, but you have a better turnaround. You have a better minimum transfer time than Tampa does. So if you wanted to fly a flight between Jacksonville and Miami and you connected in Tampa versus St. Petersburg, you would probably, your, your flight would be rated higher. Your connection would be rated higher if you hit 45 minutes if you were at that 45 minute time so if you had a flight land and then 45 minutes the next flight departed Tampa couldn't have another flight depart until an hour and 15 minutes later so now if you're designing a hub on the basis of that there are a lot of good options in the United States and the United States is very east-west east-west and that's how a lot of flights in the United States operate that's how a lot of waves in the real world work so you have a lot, you have a nice line of airports in the center of the United States that are great for serving east-west demand because the main a lot of flights go from the eastern part of the United States from the three big cities from the cities along this line right here to the cities along the west coast. So if you do this, so there's a lot of good options here, and you'll see some players, some older players in long term was using this option. So you got Wichita, Kansas right here. You have Kansas City, which has an hour, I believe. Omaha, Sioux Falls. I don't think that one has transferred. Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Dallas, Oklahoma, Austin, San Antonio, Houston. All of these are great cities. For And then there's also the little known Little Rock, uh, Arkansas, which is in here as well, if it loads, right there. So these are all good cities. For transferring passengers. Now, I want to show you something about those cities as well. So if we go to, let's say, we'll go to Kansas so I can show you Wichita. And this is the secret of uh, experienced players. This is something that we use in order to gain the upper hand. And this is something that younger players don't understand is that Wichita has 16 slots in, the, in this in auto, but a 45 minute turnaround time. So you got 45 minutes, we can move, I can move all these passengers into Wichita and then move them to the West Coast faster than almost all of the other airports. Maybe one of these other airports has at least an hour turnaround time aside from Omaha. So your rating on the ORS is going to be a lot higher. So when the competition gets deep, when the competition gets a lot, when the competition increases, you're going to experience a lot, your ORS is going to be higher and you're, you're going to have that advantage in an extremely competitive market. And this is why new players oftentimes are, are discouraged from starting in something like the United States because strategies like that, they don't understand strategies like that yet. So if we look at Minnesota and then go to Minneapolis, it's in, a, it's in a very good location as well, but you have an hour and 30 turnaround time, minimum transfer time. I always I keep saying that. So you're in a good location, but your 
your transfer time is a lot higher. So you're not going to be able to move as much traffic into a single wave. So you're not, even though you got more, even though you have more slots, you're not going to be able to take advantage of those slots as well because you're going to have to have an hour and 22 minutes between that and your next flight. Now I can show you this is another good advantage of the tool. As you can see, like in Jakarta, you can see the movements. And so you can see like there's a distinct stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. You, there's a distinct when my planes are landing and then they're departing. And there's a good, there's a good 15 minutes between one, one wave, the arrivals ending and the departure starting. So if you want to maximize connections, you got to make sure that between when you expect your waves to be at their peak, which in this case, if I look at my 4 a.m. wave, it's 155 departures. That starts at 4 a.m. Jakarta has an hour and 15 transfer time in Tempelhof. If I move, you got to then make sure that an hour and 15 minutes ago, so that's that would be in this case 2:45, that your last flight landed. So your planes have to land if you want to get to your peak wave. Most of your planes are going to land three hour, two to three hours before. In a world like this, but if you look at if you look at me down, which doesn't have as many departures either, but if you can see the point, is you can see that there's a there's almost an overlap. I'm able to make I'm able to overlap them a little bit more, and I'm able to maximize the the waves because I can get into 45 minutes. I don't have to have my planes stop flying in an hour and something minutes earlier because I'm trying to make the transfer time. So, granted, you can make the waves bigger in a, in, a, in a larger airport, but the point is the rating. So, I am growing Midan as a hub because I have that potential. One, it's not a popular airport, and I'm not competing against a lot of different other airlines, a lot of other airlines, because it doesn't have a lot of demand to a lot of other cities that is just there. Most of the demand that I'm accessing is through connections. And it takes a lot. Granted, it does take a little longer to start a hub, and you got to be a little more precise about how you choose your routes. But when you're doing this, it's it works a lot better. You have a lot more flexibility. I can move a lot of traffic, and if you're in a good location, this works even better. And this is why hubs like location-wise, it's important to choose a hub that does this as well, because location also plays into this. But Dubai is a big hub, so you. Charger is probably the better one, or even Abu Dhabi if you're going to do a, if you do the, the Middle East model, um, the Middle Eastern model of flying the hub and just fly a lot of traffic. It might be better to use Abu Dhabi because it has an hour versus Dubai, and it doesn't have the same demand as everybody as Dubai does. So you're not going to have every carrier in the world competing against you. It's going to be your hub and yours alone. You can do the same thing in the Saudi Arabia. Same deal. You don't. Not everybody can fly to your hubs because there just isn't demand there. But you can move the. You can fly flights and have fill flights just by flying between cities that need to be connected, like Hong Kong and London Heathrow want to be connected. So even if there's direct flights, you'll probably get some demand flying to Riyadh and into London Heathrow, aside from your own demand. So after talking about all that, I hope it makes sense. Um, it's a very it's a very complex kind of way to choose, and that's why it's not just simple as picking an airport and starting. It's usually a lot of planning ahead of time. And even when I found the opportunity in Indonesia, I did a lot of planning. What was my strategy? Where was I going to start? What was the best option? Um, so choosing Jakarta was not the um, was not necessarily the first choice because it was the biggest airport. It had, didn't have a lot of slots left. And everybody was flying to and from. There were five carriers there, and it's I made that clear in past videos. There were five carriers there, and it wasn't the best place to start, but it had the most demand. So for a small carrier like me who was just looking to hang out, it was the best place to do that. Just operate a couple of flights, get make money, and wait for people to leave. I just want to show up. I just wanted to make that clear, and hopefully that makes sense. So I personally... I'm going to kick it off in the United States. So we're going to go ahead and start kick off start the airline. And I'm going to make, and I'm going to tell you I'm going to be starting in Oklahoma City. And there's a reason for that. I can start in two places actually to be honest. I have two options. I can either start in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
I can start in Oklahoma City. Now, it might be there's a reason that I might choose the other one or the other. They have the same bar rating, but Oklahoma has 20 slots and an hour turnaround turn transfer time, and then Tulsa has the same. So there's really no difference between the two, but it's mainly location. I can fly flights from the East Coast to the West Coast. Now I'm going to show you another tool that the um, AS route map has. So you can go to the tools here and it, you can do, you can pull up the aircraft ranges. So whatever you want the airplane to use, you know, you can choose your airplane, whatever airplane you think you're going to use. You can go to a, the main thing I want to show you is the wave planner. So I can go to OKC, stick a time, stick a speed in there. So 830 is about the time I'm using. I'm going to start off with um, A220, CS3s. That's what I'm going to start with. And then I can say a wave every six hours. You can tell it wave intervals are also part of your hub. How you're going to set your hub up will depend on how the waves, what how your wave intervals are going to be. So I'm going. To, I usually do the United Oklahoma is usually about is about two to three hours between the coasts. So I'm assuming it takes about 45 minutes to turn around an A220, an hour to, to an hour, and 45 minutes to an hour to turn around an A220. So I'm going to think that. I'm going to fly the flight from Oklahoma. It's going to take about two hours to get to um, Washington, New York, or whatnot. Use New York as a reference. It'll take about two, three hours to get to New York. It's going to need to do its turnaround activities there and then fly another two, three hours back. So it's probably best to set up either six to eight hour waves. I'm going to go with six. And I'm going to see what the route gives me. And this is what it does it'll post this. So if I say I want my flight to be eight hours, I said I want my waves intervals every six hours, it's going to tell me where I have the best demand within that time frame. So if I want the, a plane to go out, basically, so let me explain this. So it says the red circle displays the potential on the 30 degree slices, the darker, the more bigger airport. So yeah, you can basically that means the more bars that you have. So you got. Tulsa here with five, Springfield with, you know, and you got St. Louis that has seven or eight, Indianapolis, same thing. Chicago's in there. So you got a 10 bar in there as well. So basically it's giving you the, the amount of bars that you have in the given radius. Here you got, you got Dallas in this one, you got Austin, you got San Antonio, this one you just have Houston. So you got a lot in that six hour radius. So it basically it means that you're gonna fly an airplane and it'll either the blue circle means that it'll either land in the same wave that you told it to. So we'll just remove the one we got and start it over so I can read it off what it says. So the blue circle shows a range where a two hour maintenance break should be possible while staying within the wave. So basically it means that you can fly to the airport, stop there, the plane will be able to do its maintenance at the out station and then come back and still make it within the same wave. So if you have a six hour interval, so if your flight departs at two and the next wave is at eight, it'll be able to go to Kansas City or Wichita, sit there for two hours and then come back and still make it by the 8 a.m. wave. It assumes that there's a one hour turnaround on these side. That's always what this assumes. But if I fly within the red arc here, the plane's gonna have to go there and come back either it can go and come back immediately but it can't do the maintenance you can't stop and do maintenance there so you're gonna have to have maintenance in the hub or you can have it fly there wait and then come back in the next wave after the the six hour interval so if you want to reach it within that so say I wanted to fly I think six hours is enough you access enough airports within six hours I access Atlanta Nashville Louisville Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Chicago, and Milwaukee, which are all good airports within that limit there. And then amongst that, when you go west, you see that six hours is not enough for them to go out and come back there. But you can touch Tucson, Phoenix. You can even go here. You can go St. Louis and bring them into Oklahoma and then fly them straight down to Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, all those good places. So this is a good tool to help you build your hub to decide how you're going to, how you're going to, what your model going to be, what are you planning on using, um, where you're going to fly to initially, um, 
And this is why I'm probably not going to use CS3s. I'm probably going to use 737s because I can see the demand that is here. So, and I know what is available to me flying to some of these cities. So a good connection here would obviously be Atlanta to Oklahoma, Oklahoma to then Los Angeles or Las Vegas or San Diego, something like that. Albuquerque is a good one. Phoenix, all those are good connections. So basically, you can manipulate this as much as you want. Um, you can basically go in here. You can give it. You can even type in eight hours, and let it, and let it give you an eight-hour circle of what you can access in eight hours. So if I increased my wave intervals by two hours, I can access. I can access the west, the lower. So I can access SoCal, and I can access New York. So eight-hour waves might be a better option. So you, that means in a 24-hour day, I'll have three major waves in an eight-hour day. I usually like to do even intervals. Even intervals will allow each wave to connect on each other. So if you have a two, four, so in, in the case of an eight-hour wave, you can go, um, you can oftentimes break these waves into smaller pieces too if they're the larger that they are. So if you have an eight-hour wave, then you have a 16, and then you have 24. So you can connect. So if I fly, if I miss the 16, I can connect to the 24 hour. I'm not missing one. If I odd, hour, odd intervals, usually one or two waves will get less connections than the other. That's what I've found in my experience. So that's, if I extend this by two hours, this is what I get. So today we're going to go to Oklahoma City. And I think that's going to be our plan. So we've discussed, I'm going to end this part here. Now that we have our plan. So we've decided on the United States. That's the country we chose. And then we've chosen Oklahoma City for the reasons of location, the slots of it, slot availability, and its minimum transfer time. I also chose the United States because there's a lot of options there. I understand the United States, the U.S. market. I am American, um, so I understand it. Plus, there's going to be a lot of good data on the Internet about the United States market. And we'll discuss these, we'll discuss this part in the next part about how to set up waves, how to pick the planes, how to choose your first airports. We'll discuss all that in the next video. Thanks for watching.